over 50 years, more than 71% of sharks have vanished from this Australian bay, and now the seafloor has become a true graveyard of tens of thousands of empty shells. What could have turned a quiet Australian bay into a zone of mass marine creature extermination? Today you'll learn about Australia's most brutal natural spectacle, which happens every year in Port Phillip Bay. You'll see how tens of thousands of giant crabs become helpless victims, how rays use incredible electrical superpowers for ruthless hunting, why crabs build mysterious pyramids on the seafloor, and what shocking connection humans have to this underwater nightmare. Every year in Port Phillip Bay, a fantastic event occurs that looks like a scene from a horror movie. Tens of thousands of giant spider crabs gather together and march across the seafloor. But this isn't an Australian underwater comic con or a crab disco. The crabs are gathering for communal molting. To grow, they need to shed their old exoskeletons, but the new shell takes several days to harden. After molting, crabs are so weak that some can't even stand up. Imagine a medieval warrior who removed his heavy armor in the middle of a battlefield surrounded by enemies. But this was only the beginning of their underwater nightmare. Rays know perfectly well that defenseless crabs can't resist after molting. But how do they find them in murky water? A ray's mouth is on the bottom and eyes are on top. Imagine having to do a somersault before every sandwich bite. Inconvenient, right? Rays found a brilliant solution. A special organ called Ampullae of Lorenzini detects tiny electrical currents from other animals. It's like additional nostrils that help detect the smallest changes in water's electrical field. Hiding from a hungry ray is simply impossible. It literally sucks defenseless crabs into its mouth like spaghetti. But nature had prepared an even more sinister surprise for these sea creatures. Of several thousand crabs that came to the bay for safe molting, only several hundred survive. The seafloor becomes a gigantic graveyard of empty exoskeletons. The picture is simply apocalyptic. Did ruthless nature really plan it all this way? Strangely enough, Port Phillip Bay is the safest place to do this. Gathering in thousands like small fish in huge protective schools, individual crabs reduce the probability of being eaten. Yes, there's no iron guarantee that you'll survive and not the guy to your left, but there's still a chance. Perhaps this is why crabs build huge mysterious pyramids on the bottom, an ancient defensive mechanism to appear bigger and scarier to predators. But hungry rays see a mountain of crabs roughly the same way we see an appetizing pile of cheeseburgers. In 1970, Port Phillip Bay was under reliable shark protection. Spider crabs could gather here once a year, knowing nothing serious threatened them. But the ocean began changing rapidly, and over 50 years more than 71% of sharks simply disappeared from these waters. Truly dark times began for crabs. For millions of years, sharks kept ray populations in check the simplest and most effective way, by ruthlessly hunting them. It's hard to multiply too much when larger predators constantly try to eat you. But times changed dramatically. Rays became catastrophically numerous, and this proved a serious problem not only for spider crabs. Nature lost its delicate balance, like an unstable house of cards. But this wasn't the end of the story. What else do you think feeds on defenseless crabs in this bay? Hit like if you think nature can be ruthless. Ahead awaits the most shocking truth about who's really the spider crab's main enemy, rays or fish. Give yourself a second to process this incredible information. But they've significantly upgraded their intelligence over millions of years of evolution. Mantas, the largest rays growing up to 23 feet across, can recognize themselves in mirrors. Only a few animal species can do this, including humans. Other rays learn to skillfully use tools, pressing fish against aquarium glass and sucking them into their mouths. Mantas perform impressive migrations, forming funnels around plankton concentrations, synchronously making wave-like movements. Sometimes they leap from water, possibly alerting relatives about found food or attracting potential mates. If such quantities of smart rays appeared in Port Phillip, Australian waters would run out of crabs entirely. But the real horror lies ahead. Electric rays received special electrical organs on both sides of their heads from evolution. These are biological batteries producing 50 to 220 volts, enough to knock down an adult human. A single discharge lasts only three hundredths of a second, but rays produce entire series of discharges until total victory. Ray's most common weapon is a venomous barb on their tail. This very barb caused famous naturalist Steve Irwin's death when a frightened ray attacked him directly in the heart. 
If the strike had hit anywhere else, Irwin would have survived. The venom isn't deadly to humans. But rays only attack people when frightened. We're not on their usual menu. Defenseless crabs in Port Phillip Bay aren't eaten only by cunning rays. It's a real underwater buffet. Seagulls attack from air, seals hunt underwater, dolphins conduct group raids, even other spider crabs cynically engage in cannibalism. After painful molting, each is too weak and needs urgent life force restoration. Honorable second place for mass crab consumption goes to sea stars. North Pacific sea stars shouldn't live this far south at all, but this invasive species was accidentally introduced to local waters. They felt like they were at a luxury resort, especially with so much defenseless food around that physically can't resist. Scientists seriously worry they might eat absolutely all spider crabs together with rays. But there's one creature that's uncontested champion of crab exterminators, humans. It's probably very hard to resist starting to catch crabs when there are tens of thousands around. Officially, there's a limit, 30 individuals per person per day, but this isn't particularly monitored. Essentially, humans not only destroy spider crabs, but also deprive all animals that naturally feed on them of food. Most importantly, these crabs are practically inedible for humans, so why catch them at all? Today, there's a petition from conservation organizations calling to stop catching crabs during migration and treat them more carefully. Nature created a perfect survival system where everyone plays their role. But when sharks disappear and humans with nets appear, even the most ancient instincts prove powerless. Protect what's still left in our oceans. See you soon.